Wellington started uh, 1985, um, so we're now in our 31st year. Um, and basically was started in a very barren landscape of beer. So mostly macro lagers were on the scene, um, generally very tasteless kind of beers. And, and that really fueled the desire from people that had gotten a taste from other places uh, for craft beer, for flavors that they weren't used to in beer. So enter onto the scene our, our founder, Philip Gosling, who came from England, was used to English pubs where you would get uh, real ale, uh, very traditional style, so you have your best bitters, you've got your dark, um, stouts, some of these beers that are very iconic and, and really were founded in English and is really a part of their history. So he came over here, um, was a real estate uh, developer and uh, worked hard over here, but really couldn't satisfy his taste for the beers from back home. So. What did he do? He started a brewery. Um, so Wellington was really founded on those principles of making traditional English style ales and really in the traditional format. So things were produced as cast conditioned ales. Um, they did little poly pins, so it was unfiltered beer um, and everything really was unfiltered um, and cast conditioned or bottle conditioned. It's funny, those are the kind of the catchphrases that, that have come to be associated with the craft beer revolution of the last five to ten years. Um, and these things really have existed for many years, but really were not in the North American or at least Ontario culture at the time. So he introduced them and it wasn't really, it didn't take off quite as much as he anticipated. So we evolved as a company and, and filtered beers and, and really, but kept true to those uh, traditional roots of English style hops and malt in those beers. I've been working here for 13 years, um, right out of university, and just love the craft. So I've really seen a lot of things uh, evolve over time in the craft beer industry. Um, and it's just been exciting to see, but we were one of those breweries that really made the same six beers, because it was we wanted to make sure those were consistent, the quality was there. But I was also looking around and saying, listen, the market is changing a bit. We need to make sure that we um, stay abreast of this and, and really try to um, get into this. So um, that time we started our what would be become our one-off program and started really delving into different styles and, and allowing our brewers to explore um, and, and look at some of these other styles. And, and not everything's new and innovative and weird and wacky. Um, a lot of them are really just going back to very traditional styles um, from all over the world and, and really having the opportunity to to make those beers and uh, to reach out to a, a market that's um, thirsting for them is kind of an exciting thing to do right now, so. You know, we, we've been small for so long and still, people look at it as a revolution and, and we're really a, a fairly small part of the market still. Only 8% of beer sales in Ontario. There are places that are higher, but um, but if you look at the segments that are growing, that's where you look at maybe our traditional styles like our, our flagship special pale ale. It still grows and it, it's our, our core base and we will always support that and we love that beer. It's a great go-to beer. But we're also gonna experiment with something you know a lot more hoppy. Like people have developed a taste for hops. And in our core lineup, we really never had anything like that. Which is part of our, this year actually I'm excited to say we released our first core beer that's going to be available year round and part of our core lineup in whatever, like 25 years. So we brought in Kickin' Back, which is a, a session um, a, a session beer. It, it's not really an IPA, but it has a, way more hops than um, normal. But we wanted to do it somewhat different and really um, philosophically appeal to the roots of what craft beer is. Um, so it's actually entirely hopped with uh, Ontario hops um, that we get from Collingwood from a company called Clear Valley. Um, love their philosophy as well, very similar to the craft beer industry, so we partner really well with them. But the hops all come from there in that beer. Um, and then we back it up with a bit more multi base and some of the um, lighter session beers. So um, yeah, that's sort of sort of speaks to the, the traditional and the old and then, and then the new. Um, being able to really showcase something 
local and indigenous to Ontario. The hops really, they taste different too. Like there's a very different flavor to them. They, they I mean, I've talk, you talk to the growers and they're passionate about it. They'll talk about uh, just the terroir and, and what the soil does to bring out different flavors. Um, we also have to be aware that, I mean, climate change is happening and the West Coast is getting hotter and they're having more trouble growing hops. Um, so being able to partner with somebody in Ontario where, I mean, climate change is happening here too, but it, we're becoming a better region to grow hops in. So it's kind of a cool, um, if you want a positive note to climate change, there it is, right? So. I mean, it's super important to us because without the community, we wouldn't have that support. So yes, we ship our beer to Toronto and we have sales reps there and Wellington does great in Toronto, but Toronto's a huge city. It's got a huge scene. There's like at least 20 breweries in Toronto, uh, probably closer to 30 now. I mean, in Guelph here, we have a handful of breweries. We work well with them, but this is our community. So this is where people know Wellington was founded. They know like, we're in Wellington County, so there's that connection. Um, and we really rely on the community to support us and to have that sort of loyalty. Because the reality is that there are hundreds, thousands of pale ales out there. So what is what makes Wellington pale ale, special pale ale, any different than the others? Not a whole lot. We all use malt, we, we use hops. Um, there might be minor variations. But why would somebody want to drink Wellington SBA? Well, the quality has to be there. It's got to be a really good product. and. Um, we believe it is and, and we want to maintain that but there are a lot of other good ones too so really we want to support Guelph as a community and then we hope that they reciprocate and they drink Wellington SBA because what we can offer is that it's local and it's fresh so people can come literally to our retail store pick up an SBA that could have been packaged that day and take it home and drink it so and beer really for the most part is best enjoyed fresh so um, we really believe we can do that so we sponsor tons of stuff in Guelph but as a result like Guelph supports us and, and we really want to make sure we maintain that relationship with the consumer um, and I mean I love just going out to local pubs and bars and talking to people um, and just you know ordering them a pint of SBA and we enjoy it together and just like there's that sense of community and, and and knowing that the people that work here are local and, and it's all part of that kind of local aspect.